All right. So now what we have to do is um, we have to uh, kind of address these things. But these are tip incidents are not typically a disaster, but disasters are like, you know, it really affects the entire business and all, but these are not as big as a disaster, but they are certainly, you know, need to be, uh, they have a negative effect on the organization and you need to kind of address them. So they're all kind of very closely tied up with the business continuity. So an incident could become a bigger and could affect the business as well. So we have to understand that uh, we need to be ready to address an, an incident, a security incident. And so we need to, first of all, identify and then uh, try to mitigate that incident. And uh, at the end of the day, we want to be able to go back to the original um, or go back to the normal condition. Uh, that's what the security incident main goal is to be able to go back to normal. So, um, so here are some of the in, um, examples given here. You can uh, read through these. Like, um, so as I said before, one of the most uh, important thing or, or the highest priority when there's a disaster is an interesting concept. I want you to understand this again. Uh, this is not going to be asked in the exam, uh, but the concept will be there. Concept might be asked, but the, this is known as a kill chain. So kill chain. This was uh, developed by Lock. Martin, scientists at Lockheed Martin, I, I, this is a very big company. So they come up with this model that depicts a an intrusion. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, interesting one. So let's quickly uh, take a look at that. I want you to be aware of this. Like a lot of uh, kind of uh, like interviewers might ask this question about kill chain, or you might have to study this uh, in your other courses. So maybe not in this exam, but uh, certainly kill chain uh, in knowledge is important. So reconnaissance. So reconnaissance is where you want to gain the basic information about the target. Suppose what the target is and you want to understand uh, and learn more about it. Okay. So for example, like you want to target a bank then you want to know where the bank is, uh, what kind of system it is using, where are the data centers, etc. So basic information about it. Then you're going to weaponize. You want to create some kind of a uh, malware that could compromise the target system. Okay, if it, you want to understand how you're going to target, you, you, you kind of get that weapon and then you deliver that weapon to that system. Maybe you can use uh, e email phishing, maybe through USB, some other ways that they that particular malware is delivered to the system. Okay, and then the malware will exploit some weaknesses and then uh, and then it will install on the system. And then once it is installed, then you can remotely control this uh, system and then uh, it can start doing whatever it was intended to do. So that's the last part, which uh, will action on the objectives. So it may be stealing data or damaging the hard disk or whatever it is, right? Or, or doing some kind of a transaction, monetary transaction. I can just uh, understand this. This is quite a popular one. I've heard a lot of people talking about it. It's, it doesn't cover each and every phase. It's not, it's not like this is, this is a Bible that it happens this way. But generally, many times, uh, the intruders will follow these steps. So when you understand these, uh, then you will kind of, uh, you know, wherever possible, you can stop them. That will be great. Okay, just to help you understand. Now, in terms of the uh, incident uh, response, okay, these are some of the things uh, you can look into. Uh, one of the first thing you'll do is to have a plan. Okay, so proper planning is required to for an incident response. So planning before that you'll have a policy right policy and a plan to 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 see what to kind of figure out what to do what what needs to be done and who who does what so you may have a team sometimes you call it irt incident response team or a computer incident response team computer security response incident response team you have different terms for that but then generally these are people who are trained we talked about uh SOC. okay SOC people can also handle this thing so they are trained people who know what to do when there's a incident there is an attack okay so the training is done they know what to do all those things are part of the planning phase itself and and preparing everything then so when the incident happens you got to detect that so detection can be automated okay so there might be uh, some devices like an ids or an ips or a dlp or a casb or whatever so that is um, one way to do, detect it right so then you will do the uh, initiation uh, and and uh, this is where uh, you know you, you'll start the initiation as to that there's an incident. Hey, let's now let's look into this. And in that case, you will also want to understand and analyze uh, the what you said, like all those things, like the the priority, right? So is it critical? Is it high, medium, low, whatever? 
right? So you want to understand that uh, as part of the process so that if it is anything uh, critical, you got to handle that immediately. Also, there might be a case of false alarm. What, is, what does that mean, false alarm? That could be an issue. So um, there's an automated way of detection. There's a, there could be a manual detection as well. Somebody calls up and says there's an incident here. There's a hard disk crash, whatever. And then uh, you do that initiation. You got to look at that uh, false alarms. So you can make notes. I don't think it's mentioned here. There might be false alarm. They might be prioritizing those uh, incidents. And as I said, so if, if it's a low priority, then you may take your time to handle it. But if it is, uh, you know, critical, then you handle that immediately. Then uh, the containment part. This is uh, uh, eradication and the containment part. So containment is the first thing that you do. Okay, always. Where the mitigation part is we contain it you isolate it and uh, first example that there's a virus attack on the server you pull the server out of the uh, network always so containment is, is important so you, you don't want that uh, thing to spread across for example there's a fire again try to contain it uh, and you don't want this fire to spread across right so containment is always uh, you know the the most important uh, uh, way to try and mitigate that and eradicate it, try to kind of remove the source itself. If there was a virus attack, then remove that malware. Or if there was some kind of intruder, try to put that intruder out. And then um, recovery. So this is where you kind of, um, uh, maybe there was a virus attack and uh, uh, maybe the uh, operating system got corrupted or some of the data was uh, lost or whatever. Then you might have to reinstall that uh, system. You might have to uh, restore the data. So this is a uh, recovery phase is where you want to go back to the normal, go to the uh, pre-incident state, okay? And uh, remediation is to uh, ensure that we reduce or eliminate the possibility of a similar incident in the future. For example, if the issue was because of, uh, let's say, uh, the incorrect rule in the firewall, so you're gonna fix those rules so that uh, you know it doesn't happen again. Or if there was because of some other uh, issue, then you do that again. So that's the remediation part. And then the final closure. Closure is where, uh, you know, so you, you kind of, um, instead of closure, you can also kind of write here lessons learned. You know, there's a lot of courses teach you about lessons learned. Lesson learned. Okay, the spelling is horrible. It's difficult writing this. So lessons learned is where you uh, kind of, it's, it's mentioned here also post incident review, whatever. So you can review those uh, lessons, but you've got to document that and you're going to keep that and ensure that it doesn't, you'll kind of learn from this in the future. And so you might want to review that in the future as to as, as to what, what happened. And you might want to retain any evidence if it is there so that it could be used uh, for legal purposes if required. So usually we end up with lessons learned, remediate, and then close that, officially close that incident and then review it lessons learned and then if and then you close it and uh, like i said if there's a retention of evidence required you can do that as well but that's not always necessary so that is the uh, entire process here i hope this is clear so you got to know what's happening uh, it's a very step by step process uh, it's a very uh, standard process so initiation analysis containment then eradicate the problem then recover from it remediation fix any issues close the, close the issue close the incident and then you record all, all the lessons learned and so on. So this is uh, the entire process. Okay, so incident response uh, plan development. Let's take a look at the objectives. I think that would be better if you kind of, all the job practice areas that you need to know here. So knowledge of incident management concept and practices, components of the incident response plan. So BCP and DRP will discuss that. Incident classification, categorization methods, incident containment methods to minimize adverse operational impact, uh, notification and escalation processes, roles and responsibilities in identifying and managing information security incidents, knowledge of the types and sources of training tools and equipment required to adequately equip uh, incident response teams, uh, forensic requirements and the uh, capabilities of collecting, preserving and presenting evidence. Okay, so we'll talk about all of these concepts like chain of custody, okay internal and external incident reporting requirements and procedures okay post incident review practice and investigative methods to identify root causes and determine corrective actions techniques to quantify damages costs and other business impacts arising from information security incidents okay uh, technologies and processes to detect log 
analyze and, and document information security events, okay? Internal and external resources available to investigate information security incidents. Uh, methods, of methods to identify and quantify the potential impact of uh, changes made to the operating environment during the incident response process. Uh, techniques to test the incident response plan, uh, applicable uh, regulatory, legal, and organization requirements and the key indicators metrics to evaluate the effectiveness of the incident response plan okay yeah i think this is good okay let's let's uh, go get back right so incident uh, response plan so what are the objectives uh, well you want to minimize the disruption right so we want to ensure that we are able to recover as soon as possible without much uh, financial loss or business loss and so there, there might be um, many times there might be a regulatory uh, requirement to, to have a proper uh, incident response. Uh, whenever there's an incident, you get to report it. And so that report needs to be created and uh, shared with the appropriate uh, parties, regulators, for example, or even stakeholders would want to have that report. There is this, uh, I don't know if I've talked about this model. I don't think they're gonna ask these questions, but uh, I must have discussed this CMM levels with you. And resources, so you need to have uh, resources in place, yes. Uh, Again, you need to have a people in place. So we talked about uh, SOC. So one option there, you can have a SOC and they can, uh, SOC can again be distributed, can be at a local, uh, or they can be uh, globally and whatever. And again, different types of SOC models is available. And um, they may also perform these threat hunting exercises, understanding those threats. They may be proactively looking for issues. And uh, yeah, those are, those are the things they may be doing. And these are usually uh, 24 seven, 365 operations. And we talked about these things. So again, uh, having a good knowledge of, about the network and all those things is also important. Whereas a NOC person is again a network specialist. So NOC and SOC they're not the same. NOC is mostly a network specialist. They have um, you know pretty uh, you know, specializes in, in in network. They may have idea about security, but the other other person is uh, the the SOC people are more into the security but, and having knowledge about network. So there is obviously a common um, thing. They need to understand each other. Fully, but it's slightly different, right? So soft people would be using some uh, security related tools like uh, SIEM solutions, etc. Right? Uh, so they need to uh, kind of understand each other. It's it's, it's not that uh, you know you have to understand have an understanding about networks. Okay. So malware analysis and reverse engineering, we, we can do that as well. Incident uh, command and control. Okay. So somebody can um, you know take charge of an incident. So you assign a incident to a particular person and they kind of take responsibility to uh, to finish it so you kind of assign an incident to a particular person usually okay and there might need to be communications okay they need to be able to communicate there might be reports of report format that they need to have they need to know when to update that and so on uh, so they might also need to work very closely with the legal team and the privacy team okay so that's also very important because then there are going to be uh, regulatory requirements, for example, legal requirements for reports, for uh, the communications. So that needs to be uh, taken into account. And uh, of course, the business uh, unit leaders need to be uh, need to be um, kept in loop. They need to. Um, so they are the ones who also going to be part of the thing because their business is suffering. So they need to be able to make those calls whenever there's something related to the incident they need to be part of that decision okay so if required uh, the, you know if there is a disaster or something happens uh, where they're not able to work so they need to take those calls can we work offline for example and can we do without this particular service for a while and all the stuff they, they need to make those calls uh, can you outsource incident response and the answer is yes you can Okay, like a, like the SOC team can do that for you. So, so they can, um, you can always outsource IR uh, and, and many organizations do that. So they, they kind of uh, have a team to manage these things. And uh, well, they're gonna use certain tools like um, tools for logging, okay, like a log management system, log correlation, uh, like a SIEM solution, which can um, correlate those logs, correlate those events and uh, provide some kind of an alert you can also have specialized uh, tools for threat hunting. I talked about um, the Kali Linux yesterday. You can use tools like that. There are many other tools, but uh, so we expect these people to proactively, just, it's not just about reacting to an inc incident. It's mostly reactive. You wait and then incident happens and you kind of act on that. But here we want to ensure that somebody is, uh, you know, they are kind of uh, proactively addressing those threats. So threat intelligence, 
Okay, so so what has also happens is whenever there's a new kind of threat that is uh, known, then those uh, information are, is uh, uh, kind of uh, made available. So, for example, a new type of ransomware is released. So then you need to kind of be aware of that, and 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 and. And hence, we have a protective and a detective measures in place to ensure that you are able to defend against those things. So that is important. You need to be kept up to date about uh, what's happening. So those things are all, so. The, I mean, there are many uh, resources you can uh, get that intelligence from. Malware prevention. Again, um, we can have antivirus, anti-malware solutions, IPS, IDS, firewalls. So, so all of those things can uh, probably detect UTMs. We talked about UTM yesterday. We talked about IDS, IPS. We talked about web, web filter. Okay, so typically, you do not want uh, some malicious so uh, malicious sites. So web filters, um, I guess you know that file integrity monitoring. Okay, again, uh, so if a file is uh, changed, then you got to kind of you'll know that uh, the file has somebody has you know changed this file in an unauthorized manner. Okay, so you you can uh, you know that there is uh, somebody intruder maybe. You can do that. Okay, again, uh, file. Activity monitoring again. Uh, you can detect any uh, unauthorized or unusual um, activities with the file, and again, it may indicate that somebody's uh, compromised that. And obviously, then somebody has to take care of those things. So you can have these, uh, you know, systems to monitor what's going on in your system. And anything which is malicious, anything which is unusual, those can be detected, and accordingly, uh, alerts can be there, and somebody can take a look at that. The forensics is about uh, again we, we talked about all of these things previously also it's about uh, it's about gathering those uh, uh, evidence okay, whenever there is some kind of uh, incident which uh, and and you need to gather evidence okay so if somebody has uh, done something mischievous or something uh, you, you need to be able to gather those evidence and then uh, action accordingly uh, there might be video surveillance as well okay of any person any intruder so you may be able to use that and uh, record keeping as well. So, so uh, whatever has happened, you need to have, be able to look at those reports. And remember those post-incident review. So we need to be able to keep that record. And usually, if you have a proper incident response, uh, then you can look into that in the future and uh, and and then kind of uh, see where the issues are. If, for example, if you look at the issue and see, okay, that you know that we have a lot of virus uh, attack or there is a lot of hard disk crash or there are too many uh, internet issues whatever so you can look at those uh, and and accordingly take in, take your decisions looking at those reports as to where do you want to put in your investment next